All right, welcome. Um, today we're, we're going to have a sit down with my mom. My name is Jason Shoemaker, and I'm here with my mom, April Shoemaker, uh, author of OneHourPottyTraining.com. And um, basically, I wanted to just take some time to talk about um, a little bit about the training, and uh, really, we, to, I think we wanted to focus on a little bit more about um, you know what it what it takes to be successful in in potty training, and um, really there were a lot of kind of underlying foundational pillars that I think um, need to be in place with your child from a, from a training perspective, from a, a relatability perspective to make sure they're ready and that they're, they are actually, um, actually trainable. So um, I'll, I guess I'll introduce my mom here. You can say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so what we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of talk through um, some of the items that we want to talk about as far as preparation and and um, you know how to make this successful, and I think really at the core of it, it relates to something that um, we kind of call conscious parenting, and it's kind of more of a um, a broader a broader scope on parenting in in, um, in general. But we've kind of used it to to relate to potty training and, and how to make you and your child successful. So um, I don't know. Let's let's talk about uh, preparation and um, and some of the some of the I guess core fundamental things there. I think before we talked a little bit about just like a, a child's readiness and, and making sure that they're ready for the, the training. So um, I guess first of all, like what, what, are your, what are some of your thoughts around readiness for, for a child and making sure that they're ready for the actual training? So one of the main ones is that they know how to put their own clothes on and take them off. And so you practice at different levels. So for instance, it's easier to take clothes off so if you practice before bath time that they always took their own clothes off, that would be uh, useful. And in the beginning, you have to help them. And then as you um, as they demonstrate that they know how to do the clothes, then that you encourage them to take their own clothes off. And you also make sure that they are easy clothes to put on and take off, like jogging outfits work best, not the cute little overalls and stuff that's with zippers and everything else. It just makes it really hard. Then... I know a lot of parents are really um, busy getting themselves dressed in the morning that so they dress their the kids and get them ready and so that on the weekends to make sure that you have time to practice so that the kids can dress themselves. So laying the clothes out, say on the floor or the bed in the way that would be easiest for them to put on and you just keep practicing new ways until they master the skill of putting on their own clothes. Right, so in a way it's kind of like breaking down... Um the entire process and making sure that they have kind of all the little pieces ready for them to get to that point where they're actually potty training. So one of those pieces mm -hmm. is, are they able to kind of dress themselves? And I think even in, in more so is, you know, are they, are they teachable in the sense that you can ask them like, okay, go get, go get dressed or go get ready for school and they're, that they're able to actually do that. Um, cause that'll eventually sounds like lend itself to kind of some of the, the training further down the road. Right. Right, and um, for them to go pick out their own outfit is farther down the road when they're, you know, maybe <laughs> three and a half and four. Right. Other than that, you you might pick two shirts and ask them to pick which shirt do you want to put on. Okay. You know, just give them a choice of two things. They pick the shirt and you put together an outfit, so then you have the, you know, their underpants, their shirt, and their pants easy for them to put on and then you go see and it, and it's like they grow so fast it's like e if you were only spending time on the weekends to practice this skill you would be testing to see you know how far had they grown what could they do because they develop you know sk motor skills all the time and you know how tall are they how the clothes fit right so i want to so you mentioned uh like three to four um years old so i, I guess real quick what is your I guess ideal age range um, for some, uh, I guess some of this training or or when this kind of preparation type activity should should really begin leading up to kind of the potty training. Well, I think if you are in the practice, as as soon as they start walking, really, the, you can start practicing uh, directing them to do things. So, like the easiest one is they love throwing trash in the trash. You want to make sure they're not throwing other trash in the trash, but. <laughs> You know, you ask them to go put this piece of paper in the trash, they love doing that, you know, right. and making sure that they can reach the trash, that it's something that they can do. 
that's like they learn how to follow directions. Right. So really, you're you're trying to start that as early as possible. So you're kind of um, creating that interaction. You know, you're getting your child to follow your directions. You're you know teaching them different um, you know concepts such as getting dressed and and what it takes to do that and what's right and what's wrong, what's front and back, and and kind of putting some of those fundamental concepts in their minds earlier on, kind of leading up to some of these more, um, uh, I don't know if I would want to call them advanced, but things like, you know, potty training, a little bit more complex tasks, we'll call it. Um, that's kind of what the whole point of, like, preparation and, and making sure that they're, they're, that they're ready to do, right, as far as following directions. and Right, and like, most kids are walking by the time that they're a year old, although there's no firm rule. And, okay. And How old was I? I was like... You were about a year old. Okay. And you know, uh, I don't, um, I don't think it's a good idea to practice walking around like a lot of parents, you know, practice walking with their kids, which I don't think is a good idea. You don't because, want to force it, right? Right. The kid should, <clears throat> needs to be strong enough to stand up on his own, and so that I've noticed the kids who don't have that practice actually have better posture and stand straighter, and they have the muscles when it's time to walk. Right. Um, then. By the time they're they're two, they should be able to start dressing themselves. It could, it, you know, each child is different, so there's no rigid rules. Right. So it's, that's why I say it's like practicing and testing out to see what they can manage. You know, what they are capable of doing each time that you're with them. And so, like having uh, might be a way of looking at it like play with practice, uh, play with a purpose. That you're always teaching them life skills. You're always sneaking that in there. Whatever you're doing, you have them with you while you're doing your activities. And um, seeing what small increment you could devise for them to do. Yeah, so I think there's there's kind of two things there that you mentioned. So I think one is kind of on on the in a way and on the onus of the, the parent as far as like paying paying attention or being aware of their child and, and where they're at, um, like as far as what what their capabilities, see the things that they're picking up on quickly, and um, kind of playing to that. So once once you can see that your you know child is successfully you know, walking and it's kind of, you know, they've, they've kind of figured out, um, you know, some of the different things relating to that, you can kind of move on to um, the next step or of whatever it may be. So I think before we were talking about, well, even in the, in the example of like putting away the trash, like they're, they're walking around now, they've figured out what, what the trash receptacle is and what that means and like what, yes. tra- what trash is and then you can actually kind of get them to that next level of like throwing away the trash and then maybe that leads into, okay, now there's recycling. And I think you gave an example before about like the white bin and the black bin and which one was recycling, which one was trash, right? Right, right. So the kids learn most of the stuff goes in the white bin, but they'll ask before they throw it out right. Right. which one it goes in. So the whole idea is kind of like progressively teaching these just life skills. And I think I love that, I love that concept, play with a purpose. So um, the idea is including them on kind of everyday activities. And I remember when I was a kid, that was something we did a lot, um, whether it was from from washing the dishes or, you know, putting away the toys or whatever it may have been. It was, um, you know, it wasn't just playing to to entertain me or, the, the, I guess, the child in any context, uh, but it was more of, um, you know, you were trying to accomplish something mm-hmm. and you were including me in that and at the same time trying to teach me um, you know, the skill that I need to do because eventually, ultimately, you'd like me to put my, my own toys away, right? Instead of running around the house cleaning up after me and, um, you know, it kind of taught me that skill as we went um, while, you know, at the time of being a kid, I think anything is exciting and fun and new. Um, so in that sense, it was, you know, still entertaining, I think, to a kid at that age, right? Right. It's like they want to do what the parents are doing, what the adults are doing. And so they, you know, the more that you can give them like um, washing the windows, they can handle, you know, as soon as they can handle squirting the Windex on the wi- on the door, they can do that. But before that, they you might have squirted it and then wiped it, they wiped it off. Yeah. And then as they can handle it, because, you know, they have to be like two and a half to three before they can handle holding the squirt bottle <laughs> and squirting. Yeah. And so you just work with them at the different ages or, you know, like turning on lights, is a big deal for kids. So at first you're carrying them around while they turn on the lights on and off. But then when you start, when they're tall enough, when are they tall enough 
to turn the light on by themselves, that's a big deal. So you're watching for those kind of things so you can comment on them that they're becoming a big girl, big boy, right. that they can reach the light switch. And then you also are using that when you do the potty training. They're a big boy that they can use the potty. And I like that, like especially in the, the, the example like using the Windex, right? I feel like most parents probably wouldn't hand their, you know, their two-year-old or whatever a bottle of Windex. You know, they're probably afraid it's, it's dangerous or it's a chemical or they're not ready for that. But um, I think in my mind, or at least in my experience from how you kind of raised me, was that, uh, you know, it's only dangerous to the extent that the child doesn't understand it or know what it is. And it's just kind of this unknown... So um, I think later down the road, you know, it has potential to be dangerous, but once you kind of teach them, like, this is how it's used, this is what it's for, this is not how you don't use it, um, <clears throat> and you kind of give them that experience, then it's like, you know, it further opens up the world, and you're empowering them to be independent, and it provides, I think, more self-confidence for the child, and uh, I think it's just beneficial all, all the way around, and it takes one less thing off your plate. Now you have a you know, uh, a, you know, kid that can help you with some of the other stuff that you're doing around the house already. So, that's right. It might take more time in the very beginning, but it it saves a lot of time and energy in the end. Plus, you have been trained in life skills. Yeah. You know, like <clears throat> with the dishes in the dishwasher, I would put them on the door and you know, all ready to go in the dishwasher, and then you would, then I would guide you in terms of how to load the dishwasher. Yeah. Exactly. And. Um, I think that, that so that, that that kind of touches on another good point where I think you did a really good job at breaking down tasks like kind of from beginning to end and seeing how like it would be most accessible for, for me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think you gave me an example with uh, um, maybe getting like, you know, a, a, something to drink, right? So uh, assuming assuming the child's like, you know, big enough to go to the water dispenser in the refrigerator, it's like, okay, making their sippy cup or cup or whatever available, so maybe it's in a lower cabinet, they can go get it, they can now go to the refrigerator, fill it up with water, whatever they're getting, and, um, you know, it, they're enabled to do every little step that they need to do, as right. opposed to, okay, maybe they can go to the refrigerator and get water, but they need to come to you to get their cup, um, you tried to, you did your best to make sure that, um, you know, I was able to do anything that I needed to do um, for myself. Right, having the cups and the snacks available and having a stool available. A stool has been a big help. So then they can even reach the light switches before they're tall enough. Yep. And then they'll use the stool when they're in the bathroom for the potty training to get reach to the sink or you can put water in the sink hands. so they can wash their hands. Absolutely. So it's like you're building up all the different skills ahead of time before you plan that hour of training for the um, potty training. Mm -hmm. That they you, you know that they can master all these skills, that they have mastered all the separate skills. Right. They've already practiced kind of incrementally these different these different mm -hmm. phases, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, because um, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, we're teaching, you're basically teaching a new behavior. <clears throat> and... Um, I mean, typically, I, I would say, historically almost, uh, you know, you're not going to teach several new behaviors all at once. You're trying to teach one behavior. And so in the case of potty training, you're trying to teach them to use the potty. Um, but if, you know, if you're trying to teach them to dress themselves and use the potty and flush the toilet and wash their hands and, you know, all these different things, like it's just, it's probably set for failure because they're not going to, a, they're probably not going to be trainable. They're not going to have practice taking this direction. They're not going to have, um, they're not going to have this sense of self reliance as it is to a certain extent. Um, so I think that's why I think a lot of this kind of these points that we're trying to highlight here are really important to uh, as far as making it a successful experience for both the parent and the child. Right, right, right. Awesome. Um, so I think that yeah. So we we kind of already touched on. Um, you know, creating a safe environment. I think that's. I think that's still you know important to touch on. I mean, I think we were joking around uh, earlier about uh, having these play pens, and I remember. I think I remember when I was a kid. I at least had seen them, but like those kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> three by three or like four by four play pens. Um, yes. That most a lot of parents would kind of refine their kids to, um, but uh, 
you know, I think your approach is more about creating a safe environment all throughout the house and allowing, you know, allowing the, the child to, to explore and, and see different, you know, you crawl around or walk around or, you know, climb on the furniture, or, you know, whatever they're doing to you know, have that come to full environment um, available to them so that they're not kind of closed off from that. And I think it lends itself to kind of the other kind of self-reliant things we talked about, like getting, you know, getting snacks for yourself or getting a cup of water for yourself or whatever. Right. Just it, it sort of evolves when they're given, uh, when kids are given in a free environment that's safe and, um, you know, you put all the stuff high. I always said you had to childproof higher if you were saying no too, o- too often. You had to childproof higher. Either put those things out of the way so they have a safe place to explore. Okay. Until they're old enough to learn, no, you can't touch that. Touch your toys, not my tools. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, well, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the, kind of the, just the general teaching process that, um, I mean, you applied this to not only the potty training, but kind of just every, every little thing that um, leading up to that as far as... Um, Breaking things down, I think, you know, taking one, things one step at a time. And, like, as we just talked about in the context of potty training, that was, um, you know, kind of teaching, you know, A, is the child already, I guess, like, waking up dry? Are they are they at that level where they have some, some point of control over themselves, right? Um, and then, you know, getting to that point where they're kind of self-aware of that. And then, you know, making sure that they're able to kind of dress themselves. And... The point is, is breaking down every little step, making sure that they're they have that in place leading up to right. the actual the actual training, right? Right. So there's different ways to test to make sure the child's ready. And as you said, one is that they wake up dry. Another is that they're quiet when they're peeing, or they go into a separate room to to uh, quietly poop their pants. You know, those are the signs that they're ready to begin to use the potty. Right. And so it's like really just being tuned into your child and that you've already set up the structure so that they follow directions. You know, if they if you've never said, bring me a diaper, then they don't know how to follow directions. Mm-hmm. So then it's really hard to teach them something where you're having them follow directions for this. Well, in this case, it's an hour of training. Right. Would be probably the longest time you've ever tried to train them with one specific thing. And so, you know, if they have all the other stuff, this is simple. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so you mentioned once before something uh, around, like, app- applauding incremental successes. So, um, I, so I think the broad stroke of that was that you know, you're not necessarily trying to get it right, the entire process of the entire thing, uh, training or whatever you're trying to accomplish done in one, one step, but you're basically applauding them along the way. So what, what, was, what was kind of the, the main thought there? Well, like even with the, um, in the potty training when they are uh, washing their hands afterwards, so that's, an, so that's a little separate from the training, but it's part of the training and that's a, you're not working with the doll in that particular moment, but it's right. they're now working on themselves. So they have to uh, step up on the stool, so that's good, and then they put their hands in the water, and they're following the directions, and they put a little soap in their hands, and you're teaching them how to um, you know, move the soap around on their hands, which you might not have ever taught them how to do that. <laughs> right. You might have just been wiping their hands off all the time. Right. So you're teaching them, but you like each increment of, uh, oh, good, you got the soap. Okay, good, good, yeah. you're doing great. And you're right next to them with each thing, you know, and you're making sure that the water is in the sink so that it's the right temperature. And so you're still making everything safe, and you're right there with them. I always called it like a gymnast spotter because yeah. you're just right, they're really close to help retrieve anything if it goes south. Yeah, and I, I think... I think that's a really good point too because I, I think what we see a lot is that um, a lot of a lot of people or maybe some parents will kind of default to the shortest path, right? So what's what's easiest? And um, I get that because in our in our lives today, people are busy. There's a lot going on, and sometimes you're hurried and you don't have time to you know break it down to these incremental st- steps or kind of you know. Um, be that gymnast spotter to kind of like slowly let your child, you know, learn whatever task you're trying to get them to learn or behavior that you're trying to get them to um, uh, learn as well. But um, 
I think in the long run, you know, taking that time up front to allow your child to develop that skill will kind of, it kind of pays dividends um, in the long term, right? Because uh, instead of you having to do that every time, maybe, for example, washing their hands, every time you have to get in there and wash your hands with them and scrub them clean and then send them on their way, you're going to be doing that for the next you know, year or two years or whatever it is that it takes for them to finally catch on. Whereas if you take that time up front, you know, kids learn quick. They're, they're sponges. And uh, as soon yes. as you take that time and give them that independence, they kind of pick it up and run with it. And, and then, you know, it, it, it pays in so many levels because, one, you're not necessarily doing it, right? Like you don't have to be there every time. Um, it's kind of been come, become automated for the, the child. And it's given them some more, I guess, self confidence in the things that they're capable of doing, and and um, yeah, self reliance, I guess, in that sense as well. And uh, yeah, the small investment up front pays off in the long run. Yeah, and it's just I swear the the kids start walking taller after they accomplish <laughs> one new thing. You know, they're just like so happy with themselves. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think so. Another example I think you gave earlier with that kind of the, this uh, gymnast spotter, um, I, I don't know what you call it, but analogy uh, was like, um, okay, you're talking about clearing the table at like dinner, right? Yeah. So um, I think that, that it was a good example because, well, you did a couple things, right? So you mentioned that, you, well, you broke it down incrementally. So you made sure that, you know, the first time, uh, this was like an, another child you were working with, right? Right. Um, the first time that they you asked them to do this, you made sure that the plate the the plate was cleared, right? So there's no food or potential for like spillage or anything like right. that. Right, right. Um, and then so you, what, what, I guess, what what you have them doing exactly? So for when I first introduced the practice, he has its kids I'm um, taking care of, and so it's a different rule than the parents have set up. Right. right. So you know, then I have to make the distinction on my watch. You're clearing the table after yourself. Right. So then I only did it with uh, plates that they'd already eaten all the food on it, and so that there wouldn't be they wouldn't be spilling anything, and it was just reaching getting it over to the sink. So then I started uh, working with them because the parents uh, recycle the food for composting. Um, you know, I, I worked with them on the different steps, and I didn't even know what they were at the time. But like the four-year-old could do hers really well. Take it over. She's carrying the plate level. She can. I, you know, made her. Uh, she had to get a higher stool than they were usually using, so it was like a, a chair, a mini chair. Okay. And so they brought that over, which is heavier than the stool that they usually use. So first testing out that they can bring that over. They can step on it. They can reach the container that had the food. They can pull that towards them. So each of the steps was like, oh, good. So you can you pull that towards you? And then I taught them how to scrape the food into the plate, into the bin, and then put the plate into the sink, which they already knew how to put it into the sink. Yeah. Now with the uh, two-and-a-half-year-old, he was not carrying his plate level because you don't have to if it's empty. So I had to practice with him just carrying it from the table to the sink, right. carrying it level, and then level as he came, you know, stepped up on the stool and then put it in there. And so it was, again, each step, making sure that they could do and put it in the sink. And it, they just love it. And making sure that they're conscious of it. Throughout. Right, but it was like looking at how could I make it so that they could be self-reliant with the whole step and not just yeah. with an empty plate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, that's very cool. And, again, it takes time to do that, but once they get it, they get it and they got it and then they're proud of it and then they're almost excited to do it every time and it's like and know, reminding the parents to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I imagine that was probably a surprise to the parents at the time <laughs> um, I think another good part too though so like that's an example where you're kind of teaching like an end-to-end -end process and then including them in that but um, you know I think other opportunities are things where you can just have them included in something that you're doing and I remember from like when I was a kid I can't remember how old I was. Maybe you'd remember, but with the, the scissors and the and the snipping the the snowing thread. Yes. Right? Yes, I was trying to figure out how to help you to be a part of it, and I think you were under age two at that I point. I was under age two, so and you gave me a pair of scissors. So it wasn't scissors. It was a uh, um, it's a plas. I can't. I don't know what it's called. They're uh, like folding little, scissors. I remember them very clearly. They're these like plastic uh, scissors. They weren't. Yeah, they weren't scissors. They're like snipping tools, and it was just like two blades at the end. 
um, that were already pu- mostly closed, but open wide enough to like clip a. a thread. Yeah, so the the blade inside the um, plastic fo- thing right. folded. Right. It was like a folding thing right. that. Um, so it wasn't like scissors that was as <laughs> right. exposed. Wasn't but I would be sewing, and then I would go snip, snip, and you would come over with the uh, thing so you could snip the thread. Yeah. And so. it was just like you were excitedly waiting until it was an <laughs> opportunity. I wish I could sew faster, you know, but yeah. it was like you were just so eager to be part of um, the different tasks that I was doing. And the time that I remember is when you were uh, under two again. And uh, I had a flat tire in the in, oh and I didn't know what yeah. I, I didn't want to leave you in the car because we we're on the side of the road. But I have to change the tire, and so I'm trying to figure out what to do. And so then I just brought you out with me on the side of the road, and we were on the <laughs> protected side. But you know, and I I um, had you, I gave you the job of dealing with the lug nuts, and so I would uh, take the lug nuts off until they were loose enough for you to hand take okay. them off and put them into the. Um, Hubcap. Yeah. So, I mean, it took a long time to do all that, but it was like you were focused on, and it was like training you at the same time to put them in the in the hubcap anytime you have to change the tire so you don't lose them, because I have certainly lost lug nuts before. <laughs> and so, we got them off, we changed the tire, and then your job, uh, I started the lug nut, you finished it as tight as you could get it, and then I finished yeah. tightening it. And so, it was like a teamwork effort. Yeah. Which, you know, I wouldn't normally think of teaching my two-year-old how to change tires. <laughs> but I was more afraid of leaving you that's in the car by yourself. That's yes. more of an extreme example. But, yeah, <laughs> no, I, that's, uh, that's definitely a story that stayed with me for years. And I remember other times, I mean, that's extended to other things, such as, like, uh, just, like, like, learning how to use a hammer. I was another example. I, was, I, I remember this more clearly, so I was probably older. I had to have been, like, six or seven. Um, but I remember, I forget what we were doing, but we were with my cousin, Justin, and uh, was going to, I don't know, we were working on something that had, you know, hammer um, a nail in or so whatever project we were doing. And uh, he didn't know how to do it. And he, he's, how, he's years older than I am, right? He's, he's a like couple years older. Seven yeah. or eight years older than I am, I think. And uh, me being in my position, I'm like, well, A, I, I was proud that I knew how to do this and he didn't. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, so that, you know, that, that added something. And, uh, you know, just, just. You know, again, it lends itself to kind of the, the self self confidence and uh, you know self reliance thing. I think it's it's huge in the development of of a child. Um, but I think the other important piece there is that just like the whole concept of like including your child in, in activities. I think a lot of times, you know, people today will um, kind of default to TV or default to like, like technology. It's very easy to give your child a game or an iPad or iPod or whatever it may be to kind of like go distract themselves and let you do what you need to do because you're kind of focused to do it as fast and quick as you can. And so that would have been yes. easy for you in the instance of sewing. You know, you're working on some sewing. And um, it would have been easy for you to kind of just you know, throw me in another room and have me watching TV and you do your thing. But, you know, you made it a point to include me in those activities. And um, I just think that's awesome because it's... Uh, you know, A, it's, it's, you know, that one, I think time is limited that you typically spend with, with your kids, um, especially if you're, you know, you know, only times on the weekends, it seems like the best way to in- include them in activities is, or spend time with them is including them in kind of those everyday activities and uh, making them a part of it. Right, all those things that you have to catch up on. Yeah, yeah, and sure, it takes a little bit more time, but again, it's an experience for kind of you and your child and, um you know, it's it's interacting as opposed to just plugging them into something to keep them distracted and out of your out of your way. That's right. So That's right. I thought that was um, awesome. I thought it was important to t- touch on. And I think that again, it lends itself. That's almost broader than one hour potty training, but um, again, it kind of lends itself to this concept of like conscious parenting and, and some other ways we interact with with children. But uh, I think it's uh, I think it. It also works for potty training. It's important as far as like the that process of leading up to you know being successful at this uh, activity. Um, so I I kind of wanted to touch on the process a little bit. I think on uh, onehourpottytraining.com you'll find uh, we kind of a free guide we put together that um, goes through the process and it goes through the tra- training. It's maybe fifteen pages. Um, I think it does a pretty good um, uh, job at outlining it and, and, and providing some of the more detailed aspects and concepts around each of the steps. 
But um, I kind of want to tie back, you know, I guess generally what the process is and then tie into um, some of the some of the steps and, and kind of how it ties into the stuff we, we kind of just talked about. So, um, I mean, really, the, the idea behind the, this this training is it's, uh, or at least from my perspective, is it was, uh, you know, it's teach by teaching, right? So you're, you're mm-hmm. teaching your child to uh, use the potty by indirectly teaching them to teach a doll to use the, the, the potty, right? So yes. I don't know, maybe, maybe kind of briefly summarize that and then we can touch on some of the, the main points. So once you've made sure that the child's ready um, to be potty trained and they have all the different skills, then you take that hour set aside an hour where you're just totally focused on doing this training with the child and you're teaching the child how to teach the doll how to use the potty. So to me it was like very nurturing parent. You're teaching him how to parent really because the child fed the uh, feeds the doll a bottle and then goes takes it to the potty, undresses him and you know praises him and then uh, any rewards that the you have available for the child is really not rewarding the behavior but giving them salty things and pop so that they have to pee at the end of the hour. So you're doing it as if it's a reward for um, going uh, potty but it's really just to get the child to be indirectly training so there's no resistance to potty training as well as you're plying them with the stuff to get them so they pee at the end of the hour. And then you practice from every room of the house. You practice what if they have accidents. So it's, again, focusing on practicing new behaviors. It's like you're not trying to get it perfect. And if there's an accident, you teach them how to clean it up. You teach them where to put the uh, wet clothes and so that they're prepared for many different scenarios. What if you're really busy and, you know, the doll doesn't want to get up and play because they really don't want to pause their program, (laughs) you know. Then you pause the program and you go... um, do it, or you put your toys down, or it's just it's just a phenomenal um, setup to practice new behaviors for you to be with your child for one hour, and then by the end of the hour, they usually have to go pee. Right. But certainly yeah. by the end of the hour, even if they don't have to go pee at the end of the hour, they have the skills yeah. at that point. You know, they have the skills. They've demonstrated it with the doll, and then you just you know work on. Yeah, and so I think the thing I love about this is that um, there's a lot of subtleties kind of built into it, and I think we've we've covered a lot of them. But um, so, like for example, the 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 point of addressing the doll, right? So the idea is that the the child should already already be capable of that themselves, and um, and then you're kind of tying it in with you know using the doll as your main vehicle. Um, and, and, and building it into the process of like, okay, you, you're going to go to the bathroom, or you have to dress on dress, you know, here's how to use the toilet, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of, you're kind of building on things that you've already you've ideally, you know, um, taught your child or um, you have them prepared for, right? Yes. And then the other, I think the other step is, um, so we talk about praise. You, you mentioned like the salty treats and, and fluid and <clears throat> drinks or, you know, it could be juice or soda or whatever you're, you're giving your child. <clears throat> but the the concept here is, uh, in a way, it's um, it, it's like playing with a purpose, or it's um, um, you know, there's a reason why you're doing it. So I, I think we were talking before how other trainings or other things we've seen, people are using like M and M's, or maybe they're giving them like a gold star, or they're giving them. Uh, I think someone said marbles, which you kind of laughed at as being kind of who wants not to wanting to give to your two year old. Maybe not the best idea. <laughs> But, um, you know, a lot of those other, I guess, reward systems, we'll call them, um, don't really have a purpose. I mean, other than, you know, maybe your child thinks it's fun or they like M&M's. But um, the concept here is that we're using salty treats because salt, salty treats make you thirsty. This is why, you know, bars give you pretzels when you go up to the bar and exactly. you're ordering a beer or whatever it may be because <laughs> um, it keeps you drinking, right? So... Uh, your child sees it as a treat, but it also is kind of fur- furthering encourage them to um, be thirsty. And then, so at the same time, you're providing um, whatever their favorite beverage is, orange juice or, you know, whatever it could be, Kool-Aid, I don't know. Um, but it's it has a purpose. Like, it's thought out for kind of the whole process, not, not just kind of this trivial uh, reward, right? Right, and it's like setting up the, oper- the environment to support you in winning. Mm-hmm. 
right, right. Because you're almost trying to, you're almost guaranteeing that within that hour, sometime they're gonna have to go to the bathroom, and that the idea is that you know after having gone through this process, seeing it displayed with the doll and walking through each individual step, they now have the skills and um, and like, like the idea is it'll manifest itself in, in them having to go use the bathroom, right? Right. Right. And that that was kind of your experience with me, right? and that was kind of the main main focus uh, of behind this 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 training, right? Yes. Right. Um, and then I think the last part was um, kind of the rehearsal part, right? So you mentioned going to different rooms, almost like simulating different scenarios, and getting your child to kind of think through these scenarios and um, and you know, think about what behavior or action they'd have to take, right? And so I think that lends itself to what we, we mentioned before about, you know, we're practicing new behaviors. The child's still learning. Um, they, and it doesn't have to be right the first time every time. Like the, you know, I think we've said before, like, accidents are going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing's guaranteed. But the idea is that they're going to have the, the, the foundation there to, to, to build upon and... Um, the more of that that you focus on, the more of the scenarios that you kind of go through, the more that you get your child thinking about these things, um, the more successful they'll be ultimately kind of the end of the, end of the training, right? Right. Plus the other thing that's part of this training is that you have a list of all of their, um, their aunts and uncles and their superheroes and, and you talk about, um, you know, the Superman pee in his pants yeah. and like expanding the, uh, their thinking beyond just themselves. So right. they're thinking about how other people operate in the world. They're thinking about who's going to be proud of them. You know, Uncle Tom's going to be really proud of you when you pee in the potty. We'll call them. Yeah. You know, it's just like expanding their awareness of how their behavior can impact other people and how other people are interested in their behavior. So it gets it outside of just you and your child. Yeah. So underlying that, it's like the psychology behind it and using some of the, like, the social awareness and like social proof. I think for me it was probably uh, Leonardo of the Ninja, Ninja, Ninja Turtles or something like that. Probably. Ninja Turtles were popular then, yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because it gets you thinking, and you know, those are at the time, you know, those are some of your idols, and uh, you don't want to disappoint them. <laughs> um, in some cases, it's probably a, a teacher or something like that, maybe even, um, you know, whether it's daycare or, you know, I guess kindergarten's probably too late. You're four or five. Hopefully you're potty trained before then. <laughs> but um, either way, you're, you're kind of using that as, um, you know, using the psychology behind uh, the social awareness and, and how you see yourself in the eyes of others. So mm-hmm. That's um, right. Yeah. All, again, it's all very um, thought out to help build upon itself throughout the process. And uh, those are kind of some of the, the core pillars. Um, so I think I think that about that about covers it. Um, did you have any other general comments? I think we we got a lot of it in. Uh, we got a lot of it in, and and uh, uh, going reviewing this particular text, it's just as useful in any kind of parenting. Anything you wanted to teach, you could then use this method, and you learn. You just practice so much. It might seem a lot in that to do in an hour of intense training, but it's like you're trained more how to parent as well as you've been teaching your child how to parent. It's just the coolest thing. Yeah. It's just the coolest thing. And I, I think the last thing I'll say on that is um, that, you know, beyond beyond what the ultimate goal here is, which is potty training, like it's it's an experience for, for you and your child, right? It's um, it maybe not might not be a memory for them. I don't think I remember much of anything when I was two, but uh, <laughs> but you know for you it's it's still something that I think uh, you know builds on the, the kind of the fundamentals of your relationship with a child, and it definitely builds on some of the things that you're going to be teaching them and working on with them like throughout their lives. So it's just I think a good process and kind of good ideology to to follow throughout. Um, and it'll, I think it'll, as I said before, you know, it kind of pays dividends in the long run. So very, very, uh, very cool tool. Um, all right, so we'll, let's, uh, we'll wrap this up. We're, we're going to conclude here. Um, as I mentioned before, you can find uh, the free, our free uh, one-hour potty training guide um, on, the, on our website, onehourpottytraining.com. Um, I'd love for, you know, anyone, uh, anyone listening, uh, leave your comments, go to our website, check out our download, give us your feedback. Um, truly, we want to provide the best information possible um, 
I think my mom here has a lot of great knowledge and uh, we're working to um, working with that to, sh- to share it because I think it's uh, I think it's beneficial for um, child and parent alike so thanks for listening and uh, uh, stay tuned for more all right bye